all through history, there has never been the equal of a Malcolm X. He never went to Al Azhar University. No. He couldn't speak Arabic. No. But Malcolm had a backbone made of steel. And Malcolm was not afraid to stand up to the slave master. And if Malcolm were alive today, he would look to the White House and say, there's another house slave. And that's why Africa today is in miserable poverty. Around the world today, from the study of these five questions and the answers given, we can not only recognize but also understand what's going on in the world. This is the importance of the subject of signs of the last day. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to send the angel at the end of the life of the Prophet when he had just a few days left to live, about 80 days left, 81 days. The reason why he sent angel Gabriel alayhi salam at this last stage of the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam because herein in this event is the key to the understanding of the last age. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam spoke profusely giving many many more signs the slave woman of course we're gonna to have to come back to her why does she have to give birth to her mistress why not her master and how can a slave woman give birth to one who is going to rule over her it's going to tickle your intellect in this retreat but for those who seem to be blind and cannot see and continue to preach Islam with a message we've heard again and again and again and again so that now we are, excuse me, we're yawning. Oh, we've heard it already. But refuse, they refuse, they refuse to touch this subject. We ask them, did he not say that when the last age comes, women would be dressed and yet be naked? Did you not hear that? When last have you gone to a shopping mall? Hmm? Is that not here now? Women are dressed and yet naked? When the world is moving in that direction, you see which way I'm pointing. Women are dressed and yet naked. Tell me, what kind of intellectual acumen do you have that you insist that we must remain a part of mainstream society? Huh? No. If that's the direction in which they are moving, we're going to move in the opposite direction. He said that women would dress like men. When last have you gone to the bank? Do you see them how they are now required to dress? There was a woman who was working in the Hilton Hotel in Port of Spain in Trinidad. 
couple of years ago, the manager, I believe, is a Muslim. But uh, we're not concerned with him now. But Hilton Hotel decided that these are our rules. That you have, as a woman, to come to work dressed with a jacket and with trousers or with a tie. And she refused. She said, no, I don't want to dress like that. I'm a woman. I'm not comfortable with that. Do you have any problems with my work? No, 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 you're a very good worker. We're proud of you. But unless you're prepared to abide by our dress code, we can't have you. It would be, it would be bad for the image of the Hilton Hotel for a woman to appear dressed like a woman. <laughs> yes. And so, when you see the world moving in that direction, that women are now tailoring their clothing to conform with a mainstream ethic which says that you must dress like a man with trousers, with a jacket, and a tie. When they're moving in that direction, what kind of intellectual acumen do you have if you also move with the mainstream? We say, when they're moving in that direction, we must move in this direction so that our woman would truly and enchantingly be woman. He said, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, about the last age. That men, uh, uh, don't be annoyed with me. Don't be annoyed with me. I'm just quoting what the Prophet said. He said that men would dress like women. That was women being dressed women dressing like men. This is men dressing like women. Now I invite you, go on the internet and check out photographs of US presidents from number one. Was it George Washington, number one? George Washington, yeah. Check out the photographs of presidents of the United States of America. And as you go to them one by one, one by one, one by one, suddenly you will ask yourself, where did the barber come from? Because, hey, the beard is going. Every president had a beard. But look at the photographs. They all had beards. Every president of the United States had a beard. And if at that time, there was a man without a beard. Well, let me explain, teach you a local expression now. So you'll take this back with you. And a child were to see a man without a beard, the child will say to his mother, Mama, look a boo booty. Mama, look, look a boo booty. A man without a bed. Well, why has modern Western civilization chosen to remove the bed? And uh, we, of course, are simply following them sometimes without knowledge. And I hope I'm not offending anyone. I have a job to do, let me do it. The answer is that a man cannot dress as a woman and yet have a beard. <laughs>